explain I'm out getting this money right now as usual um, funny story well not really a funny story but um, I went to Grubhub orientation yesterday and I got home and I edited everything and then I don't know how but I accidentally deleted all of the footage so um, but I guess it's a cool thing because the video was about 30 minutes long and honestly it was nothing but me talking so I'm going to try to keep it short. I just wanted to highlight a couple of key points that was brought up during the orientation and then after the video of course I have some photos of the equipment that was given to me um, during the orientation so I'll uh, stay tuned or to the, to the end of the video so you guys can get a look at the equipment that's provided for Grubhub drivers okay. So, first things first, um, orientation is about 15 minutes, give or take long. It's really not that long. And actually, in the orientation that I went Turn right onto Rosecrans Avenue. You're meeting with what's called your driver specialist. The driver specialist with Grubhub is your first point of contact for anything. Now, of course, if there's anything that has to do with pay, um, they have an email and, I believe, a phone number, Grubhub Care. Um, for drivers where you can call in and they will help you when you're on the road or they'll help you with general inquiries or whatever the situation may be. So the driver specialist is who you meet with when you go in for your orientation. You go in for your orientation, they provide you with two Grubhub bags. They provide you with a fairly large bag, which is big enough to carry pizza. And then there's a smaller bag, which is kind of standard to the, the same size as the other companies, DoorDash and Postmates has been giving you, except the material on the Grubhub bags are a lot thicker and the quality to me is a lot better. They're just a, a little bit more durable and heavier. Um, you also get provided with t-shirts. You have a choice between red t-shirts and black t-shirts. You have a choice between regular t-shirt or polo t-shirt. You can get one or one of each or two of the same or, you know, whatever. Whatever shoots your fancy. Me personally, I wanted the color red because it stands out, it's bold, and it just so happens to be my favorite color. So I got two red shirts, but I got one regular t-shirt and one polo. Continue on Rosecrans Avenue for half a mile. Okay, outside of that, you also get a, um, it's not a car decal, but it is a dashboard sign that you can place in your car when you're out on a delivery. It basically just says Grubhub delivery driver, uh, delivery in progress, be back in, I believe, five minutes or a few minutes, something like that. So you get that too. Um, and I think that's it, the t-shirts and the bags. Um, key points that they went over pay and the structure and how you work basically how you make your money so with Grubhub you have to schedule yourself they call it blocks so you have to schedule yourself to work a block a block could be one hour or it could be an hour and a half I think the minimum is at least one hour um, from my from what I understand and from what he told us yesterday um, if you do not schedule yourself to work a block with Grubhub, um, you won't get any deliveries. You can toggle on, which is what they call it when you um, go to the Grubhub app and you put yourself as available to take orders. You can toggle on at any time when you see that it's busy within your region, but you're not guaranteed to get any orders. The priority of orders goes to those who have scheduled themselves to work blocks. And I guess they do that to kind of cut down on oversaturation so that everybody gets a chance to make money, which to me, I like it. Some people may not. They just want to get on whenever they can because they have schedule with their primary job. So it's not that easy for them to just um, schedule around it. And I get it. But for those of us who have a little bit more free time, I personally think that it's a good idea for them to make you schedule yourself. The other good thing, let's talk about pay. So pay is dependent upon your region, which before I get to that, let's talk about your region. So upon signing up for Grubhub, you get to choose a region. The region that you choose, of course, depends on where you live, or of course, I, I think you have the option to choose um, a region that's not where you live. I chose the region that was close to close to where I live so 
before toggling on, even if you are scheduled to work a block, you have to make sure that you are within your program, your uh, not program, within your um, marketplace region. Make sure that you are within. In the driver app, in the Grubhub driver app, you can go to the option for regions and it will pull up a map that will be outlined in blue that will basically show you the cities that are included in your region as long as you're in in 800 feet use the left two lanes to turn left onto carmenita road as long as you're inside of those blue lines that outline your market region place you're good to go if you are not within those within your marketplace region um again the probability of you getting any orders even if you are scheduled to work a block will probably be zero percent so um Make sure you're in within your marketplace region before you toggle on, even if you are scheduled to work a block. Okay, now let's talk about pay. So each market region, as far as I know, have different pay rates. My market region is a $4 minimum, which means the order cannot go below $4. I get $4 per order plus 50 cents per mile Plus Use the left two lanes to turn left onto Carmenita Road. Plus 100% of my tips. Now, let's say you're scheduled to work three hours, right? Let's say you're scheduled to work five to eight. And for whatever reason, maybe it's slow, you don't get enough orders that's worth it. They have what's called an hourly guarantee. Again, this is all based on your particular market region so every market region is not the same my market region is $12 an hour so for those three hours that I work if I do not make the minimum of $12 an hour they will contribute the rest of that pay so I will at least walk away with the $36 for those three hours I happen to like that Again, for those of you who are like, oh, I'm trying to get 50, 60, and 70 dollars, I do get it, but I still appreciate the fact that there is a hourly minimum because with DoorDash and with Uber Eats and Postmates, there is no hour, there is no hourly um, minimum that they'll give you. So if you schedule yourself with DoorDash, which just so happens to be my fave, if you schedule yourself to work with DoorDash and you end up working three hours and you only end up getting, um, let's say you get four orders in those three hours, which for me the the best would be six orders for those three hours more would be better but at least six but if you only end up getting four that could continue on Carmenita Road for two miles that could put you at anywhere around twenty dollars maybe even less so I definitely think it's a good idea um, for them to have the hourly minimum pay is weekly just like the other gig economy apps the only downside to the pay structure with Grubhub is the fact that they don't offer instant pay or daily pay. So you have to wait that one complete week before you can get your, your earnings deposited into your bank account or um, wherever your money is going. That's the only downside. Um, outside of that, I don't really see any other issues um, right now. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, when you start driving, this is how you schedule yourself. When you start driving, you are what's called an entry level driver. Now there are four levels to Grubhub drivers. There's the entry, which is when you first start, which basically just means that you have 20 or less orders within the last 30 days. Then the next level up is partner. Then the next level up is pro. And the highest level is premier. Now you are uh, placed into these program levels based off of three categories. Your acceptance rate, Your um, the other one is your block rate, which means if you drop your blocks, unfortunately that counts against you. Against you. Your acceptance rate, your block rate, and I can't remember the other one just yet. Um, when I go back and edit this video, I'll be sure to post the three components um, that affect you. One thing I do know for sure is that the customers do not rate you. So if there is a item missing from the order, um, 
it is the responsibility of the restaurant not the responsibility of the driver um, with Grubhub from what I've noticed just on doing research and looking up the restaurants that they work with they don't really do a lot of fast food honestly it's not really that much I think the only fast food that I recognize off of the list was Taco Bell um, other than that everything are d uh, diners or restaurants so with a lot of these places the bags already come sealed up so the only thing you can do is kind of like feel from the outside of the bag to see you know if 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 all the items are in there but most of the time the items will be sealed another thing is Grubhub wants you to limit your contact with the food as much as possible that means when you go inside of the restaurant you are to have your Grubhub back they are very very serious and adamant about that they do not want you entering inside of the restaurant without your Grubhub back the t-shirts are not um, mandatory but the bags are um, they want you to take the bags in and basically allow the employee from the restaurant that you're at picking up your order to put the food into your bag and that's it. Make sure that you have all the condiments and utensils and your drinks because that is number one um, item that is forgotten whenever you work with some restaurants and some fast food places. It's usually the drinks, the utensils, and the condiments. Um, but that's pretty much it. The, the only way to move up in rank is to basically keep your block drop rate at the very minimum so if you know that you can't work certain days or certain hours don't just grab them just for the sake of you don't want them to get snatched up because then if you end up dropping them even if it's the very next day that counts against you um there are days set for each level to pick blocks for example hold on you guys give me one second all right, y'all, sorry about that. So, like I was saying, um, I can't really remember where I left off, but it seems like the only way to really move up in terms of your, oh, scheduling, that's what I was talking about. When it comes to scheduling your block, so there's a certain day that is assigned to every program level for Grubhub. Um, for entry level and premier entry level drivers, which is when you're just beginning, and premier drivers, which is the highest level, they get priority. So, entry level and premiere, they can s schedule blocks for the next coming week on Thursday. For premiere level drivers, they get to schedule at 10 a.m. For entry level drivers, drivers, they get to schedule at 2 p.m. on Thursday, but it's the same day. For pro level drivers, they get to schedule Fridays at 10 a.m. for the next coming week. And for, is it pro? No, partner, I'm sorry. For partner, which is the lowest level, for partner, they get to schedule on Fridays um, at 10 a.m. I think it's, no, I had it right the first time. I'm sorry, y'all. I had it right the first time for, uh, it's premiere, pro and partner for i believe for pro pro they get to schedule fridays at 10 a.m and partner which is the lowest level they get to schedule saturday at 10 a.m so unfortunately for partner level drivers they um get like whatever's left over from all of the other level programs um if if there just so happens to be a block that's dropped of course you can check in the app daily just to make sure and you can always pick up any extra blocks but in terms of the scheduling um, those are the days that are assigned to the different program levels let me see if I can say it again so for entry level and for premier level drivers they get first pick which is Thursdays for premier drivers they get to choose at 10 a.m. when the schedule comes out and then for um, entry level it's at two, not, yeah, 2 p.m. For Pro, which is the next level under, they get to schedule the next day, which is Friday at 10 a.m. And then for Partner, which is the lowest level, they get to schedule Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, once you get a sufficient amount of orders under your belt and you have a low block rate and drop rate and your attendance is good, meaning you show up when you schedule yourself um, and you're consistent, you can start accepting or they'll invite you i think they'll invite you it's like in corporate invite i don't know if it'll come from your driver specialist or if it'll come from someone um who works in the corporate um part of the business but they will invite you to start accepting accepting uh 
catering orders and from my understanding catering orders of course are a lot larger and of course the earnings potential with that are a lot larger so you guys that's all I want to say about Grubhub I'm actually starting my first block on Monday I believe that's the 25th I'm actually pretty nervous about it not dealing with customers but only because they have this promotion going on with Taco Bell which a lot of you probably have already seen um, from other YouTube videos where uh, I think they're getting their delivery fee free or something like that but there's some promotion that's got the customers going crazy. in a quarter mile turn left onto Hutchins Drive um, I saw one video where this guy said he literally got all Taco Bell orders in one night and he made like almost a hundred and something dollars or he, I think he made over a hundred and then when I went to orientation yesterday my drive take the next left onto Hutchins Drive was saying himself that uh there was a driver who got seven back-to-back -back <laughs> uh, Taco Bell orders. Um, so, I'm, I'm only nervous about that. Because In 800 feet, turn right onto La Mirada Boulevard. With DoorDash, the good thing about with DoorDash is that once you're on an order, unless there's a small order near you, they don't usually stack orders on top of each other. But with Turn Grubhub, right onto La Mirada Boulevard. They will stack orders, and Grubhub doesn't, I don't believe that they um, separate them in the app for you, so you kind of have to, like, actually, my driver, I forgot to tell you guys, my driver specialist told me to carry a uh, permanent marker with me, a Sharpie with me, so that way, if I get multiple orders at one time, I can, you have to prioritize, you can write them down in a notebook, this one's first, this one's second, this one's third, this one's fourth, or whatever, but, you know, you're, this, you, you're gonna have to put a little bit more extra work. Continue on Limerata so. Boulevard for one mile. That's all I want to say about Grubhub. Um, of course, I'm going to do an update after I work my first couple of blocks next week, and I'll let you guys know how I feel about it. Oh, stay tuned, you guys, because I have a video coming out um, on, what is it called? Hop, Skip, Drive, which is another gig economy app. But this one is, you're a care driver, so you basically pick up children or senior citizens or uh, kids with special needs. So um, I have orientation coming up for that. Check that out. All right, you guys, as always, stay safe, stay inspired. Thank you for joining me, being loyal to me in the short time that I have been on YouTube. I hope that you guys stick around to continue to watch me grow and grow with me. Like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to leave any comments down below. I will definitely appreciate it. Um, as always, you guys, I love you, and uh, I'm going to continue on with my night and make this money. So, I 